God and Emmanuel. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of our Creator, the one whose spirit draws us all together for the sake of love. Welcome to worship this morning. We gather today as one community of faith, whether we find ourselves in the sanctuary or whether we are online, we are bound together by the Spirit. For anyone who may be with us for the first time or new to the Emmanuel community, we offer a very, very special welcome, and we are so, so glad that you are here. Well, last week, we began our new theme, Called to Be the Church. Last week, we renewed our sense of awe and wonder and brought to mind one of the pillars of our faith, and that is anything is possible when we believe in God's world. The book of Acts describes the early church as filled with awe at the wonder of all the things being done. Well, another aspect of the early church from the book of Acts is that the people were together in community. And so that is our focus today, called to be the church, together in community. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the Spirit by opening in prayer. Let's pray. Creator God, you are relational, and you call us here into relationship and into worship together in community. Each person here comes with their own unique gifts and experiences. Help us to learn from each other and to build a community based upon your love and care for all of us and our neighbors. Wherever we go in this life, we are surrounded by God's love and forgiveness, inviting us into a community of care. Thanks be to God. Amen. And join with me uh, in our responsive call to worship, and the uh, congregational response is in white. We are called to be the church. We come to learn the lessons Jesus taught. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. We become an amazement of the wondrous things God is doing in the world. All who believed were together and had all things in common. We come to learn from you. We come to share with one another as God's people. We come to worship God together in community. Amen. Amen. And so, let us sing together our opening hymn, which comes from Voices United, number 395. Come in, come in, and sit down.
Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Please uh, be seated. And uh, yes, peace. We have been uh, taking time to learn Brennan? how to pass the peace with one another uh, using sign language. So we will uh, try that again today. Um, and so just for the sake of some people who are newer uh, to our community today, let's practice. So uh, we pass the peace. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so the terminology is peace be with you and also with you. Peace. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So we uh, put our hands together and we move them back and forth and we go like this. And that is peace be with you. And then two Y's motioning back and forth to each other and also with you. So let's just try that all the way through once more. Peace be with you and also with you. Let us take a moment to acknowledge uh, our neighbor and share a sign of peace with one another. <laughs> peace. I almost completely forgot how to do it. <laughs> with you, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't practice that part. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's like trying to say the Lord's Prayer. You say it so many times over and over again, that when you go to say it, you forget it. To those in our online community, peace be with you. <laughs> hey, Neil, peace be with you and also with you. <laughs> Wonderful. You're all getting so good at it. You're all getting so good. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, it's time to see if we have any kids online today that might want to uh, come and spend a little time in church. I was just saying to Nancy, you do something by rote so many times, like saying, it's almost like saying the Lord's Prayer, and then all of a sudden you go to say it and you completely forget it. I was just having a little moment like that. Oh my goodness, look at the kids we have today. Brendan and Jamie and Erica and Delaney. And where's Roman? Where's Roman? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, good morning, Roman. And good morning to all of you. Well, I am so glad that there are so many of you together today because we are talking about community today. And you are our community of kids. And so I thought that maybe all of us could spend some time together in Vanessa's playroom today. Vanessa, uh, she has a story to tell us all about community. She has a couple songs to sing with us today. So let's spend some time with Vanessa in her playroom. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Okay. Let's roll it. <laughs> Oh, hi! How are you? Do you want to join me in the kitchen? I'm famished, so I'm gonna make myself a little snack. Would you like some? Okay, come on, let's yeah. go. What's a snack for today? Turn up the heat. Hmm. Somehow, I think it 
it needs a little something. Do you have any ideas of what we can put in the pot? You know, this reminds me of a story. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Come on. The Good Neighbors and Their Stone Soup. A lost hungry neighbor with no food to eat wandered alone in the night. Their stomach, it growled and the wind coldly howled. Surely someone would help them tonight. They knocked on the door of a house with a light. Hopefully somebody here would care. I'm so hungry, they said in a bit of a fright. Do you have anything you can spare? The homeowner got mad and said, go back to your home. Just leave me alone. I don't care. I work all day long. I have bills. Move along. Go away. How on earth is this fair? The door slammed and locked. The neighbor was shocked and they shouted aloud, that's not right. I just wanted to eat not to starve in defeat. I'm like you, not a thief in the night. In frustration and hate, they turned at the gate and picked up a rock out of spite, ready to swing. Remember this thing, we matter, they shouted in fright. Wait, take a breath, the lost neighbor said, to themselves thinking back on their life. I don't want to cause harm or to break anything. Remember to share the love light. Hungry they sat and took off their pack and pulled out their spoon and stove pot. I have nothing to eat, but I still have some hope. And that stone in my hand I've still got. Our neighbor they pulled from out of their pack some clean water that was fresh and full. Poured into the pot and the rock went kerplop and they bundled up in a blanket of wool. With the stone in their pot, well now what they've got is the start of a stone soup for all. As some people passed by, they asked what? And why, as they came to his seat by the wall. I'm making stone soup for all to partake. Do you have anything you can give? The people could see that this someone in need, just like them, needed food just to live. Sure, they said with a smile, and after a while, they added some green artichokes. Soon carrots and potatoes, some corn and tomatoes were added by all different folks. Onions and peppers, peas, pasta letters, beans, celery, and egg yolks. It didn't take long for a fire and a song to warm up their hearts and their hopes. Now we'll simmer and stir, low and slow is preferred, and add some good salt for good taste. And you, my good friends, our good neighbor says, are the salt of the human race. Together they shared and everyone cared, making friends as they stuffed their own face. Good to the last drop. All those veggies they chopped and not a spoonful to waste. Delicious, they said before heading to bed after eating their bowl full of love. The soup of the day is the gift of the way, enough to feed until we're fed up. When the soup was all gone, only left was the stone, the old rock that helped them think up. And etched in the stone by the spoon of their own was the word, and there it read, love. Did you like that story? Oh, I'm so yeah. glad. Gives me an idea. Maybe we should add something to our soup. Yeah? All right. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Let's see. 
see. Perhaps there might be something new. <gasps> Look at all those vegetables. Hmm. What have we got? Um, some cabbage and some peppers. Red and green. Mm, delicious. Some corn and carrots. <gasps> potatoes. I love potatoes, especially from PEI. Some broccoli. <laughs> yep. And a mushroom. This is gonna be delicious. <gasps> and is that an artichoke? Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Time to chop it up, cook it up, and put it on our plate. All right, time to add it to our soup. <laughs> Looks like how I cook. Love, joy, peace. 
lot of fun. I think I want to sing another one. Do you know where we keep oh, the fruits of the spirit? I know a song about it. Let's play. <laughs> Right, Erica, you're I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy. And that was a lot of fun. I bet our yeah. soup is ready. Let's check it out. Oh, oh yes, it's coming along beautifully. Actually, I think it's ready. Would you like a bowl? Yeah. Here. Scoop this into your bowl here. There you are, bowl of soup. I hope you enjoy. Now, let's see here. Anything left in the pot? Well, that's right. We had a rock. Wouldn't you know it? It says... Can you see it? Nope. 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 You can't. <laughs> I'm going to have to reach in. Our stone says love. And you know what, friends? I love you very much. I miss you and I'm sending you hugs. I hope that you're happy and having lots of fun and that the fruits of the Spirit are in your heart. Until next time, friends, stay safe and love lots. That's something, eh kids? It's always so much fun spending some time in Vanessa's playroom. And I hope this week that you have a chance to be together with some friends and dance and sing and celebrate because we have the Spirit in our hearts. Can we pray? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for all of the ways that you teach us to be together in community. Because when we're together and when we share with one another, there just is always enough for everyone. Amen. Thanks, kids. Nice to see you, Erica. Those dance moves were amazing. I loved it. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now. God of friendship, I come to know your love and care 
through the embodied presence of others. Weave me together with kindred spirits. Knit me more closely with friends of the soul. Cultivate in me a kinship with humanity so that I recognize my struggles and joys in others. In my loneliness, reveal to me this communion and may I be a solace to others who ache for connection. Transform me through conversation and loving presence. Help me to see how I am part of a great circle of pilgrims, witnesses, ancestors, and mystics who guide me to true connection with you. Gather me into your great wide heart so I might discover I am never separate but always held in love. And Edith will now read for us our gospel. The gospel this morning is uh, from the Common English Bible, uh, Luke 10, 25 to 37. A legal expert stood to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But the legal expert wanted to prove that he was right. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves who stripped him naked, beat him up and left him near death. Now it so happened that a priest was also going down the same road. When he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot, saw the injured man and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. A Samaritan who was on a journey came to where the man was, but he saw him, when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending them with oil and wine. Then he placed the wounded man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took two full days of worth of wages and gave them to the innkeeper. And he said, take care of him. And when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. What do you think? Which one of the three was a neighbor to the man who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who demonstrated mercy towards him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Thank you, Edith. And we also have a reading today from uh, the book of Acts. This is actually the story of Philip and the eunuch. Um, we don't often get to hear some of the other stories from Acts of the Apostles. So this week and next week and throughout this series of Called to Be the Church, we get to hear some of these other stories from uh, the book of Acts. So this one is about Philip and the eunuch. And just as an aside, historically, a eunuch uh, was a male slave 
who was castrated as per terms of his employment because eunuchs played a specific role as a guard to um, the uh, living quarters of a royal woman. And so to eliminate any threat, um, it was in his job description to be castrated. And so this is the story of Philip and the eunuch. An angel from God spoke to Philip, at noon, take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way from Jerusalem, where he had just come from worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of Candace. Candace is the title given to an Ethiopian queen. He, the eunuch, was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage. The spirit told Philip, approach this carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, do you really understand what you are reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. And this was the passage of scripture that he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb before its shearer is silent, he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his, his descendant because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, about whom does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. As they went down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, water, what should keep me from being baptized? He ordered the carriage to halt. Both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip baptized him. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. And let's sing, shall we, from More Voices, number 89, Love is the Touch. So last week, we began our exploration of what it means to be called to be the church. We noticed that the description of the early church given to us in Acts 2 begins in a place of awe and wonder, where people were taking time to notice and be amazed by the things that God was doing around them. 
This week, we continue by describing how the early church spent much time together in community. All who believed were together, the scripture tells us, and had all things in common. Being drawn together in community is part of what it means to be called to be the church. Why is being part of a community of faith so important? Couldn't we just all read the Bible at home on our own and follow the examples on our own time? Why did the Ethiopian eunuch invite Philip to discuss the scriptures with him? Couldn't he just think for himself? Or like today, can't we just Google the answers to our questions? Because our faith is deepened through interactions with others, and this is what we see clearly in the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. He was already reading the scroll of Isaiah, but it was not until he met up with Philip on the road and they had conversation together that they made the connection to Jesus. It was through his conversation with Philip that he learned all the amazing things that Jesus had done. And it was through Philip he began to know God and come to ask to be baptized. Studying theology from books is a good place to start, but it's through our conversations uh, that we have with each other and other people that we are able to know God more fully. We are all made in God's image, but we all express God's image differently. It is through looking for God's spirit in others that we are able to form a richer picture of God and who and what God is. But as we know, learning in community isn't always easy. Holding all things in common doesn't mean the early church agreed about everything. When it comes to matters of faith, people don't always agree. And those disagreements can have a huge impact on our life together as the church. Some students from the ecumenical campus ministry at the University of Guelph meet for lunch once a week. During those meetings, one student posed the question, why are there so many different denominations? Well, the short answer was given that when disagreements about theology or expressions of faith occurred, and they couldn't be resolved peacefully, it often resulted in a new branch of the church being formed. The next question naturally was, so what does the United Church of Canada believe? And it's not easy to define our belief as a denomination, but this is the response that was shared. The United Church believes there is a space for people of different understandings about faith because it, is it, because it is through our differences that we challenge each other to learn and to grow deeper in our faith. The students then sparked a lively discussion about how we can coexist with people whose doctrines are so different that they can be hurtful and cause harm. Some doctrines and interpretations of faith seem to preach segregation and hate instead of love and inclusion that we see uh, reflected in Jesus. How can we care for our neighbors who don't seem to care for us? Well, the call is simple, uh, but to live it out is not easy. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We are called to love our neighbors in spite of the challenges we may face. Loving our neighbor doesn't always mean that we will agree, but it does mean that when we disagree, we cultivate an attitude of honest curiosity rather than condemnation or criticism. It means we take time to consider and understand each other's point of view. When we are curious to understand, we open channels of dialogue and learn from one another. When we criticize and condemn, we close off these relational pathways. As we attempt to dialogue, it is important to remember that called to be the church means we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves. That means that we are called to love ourselves too. 
Sometimes loving ourselves means asking for time to go away, to be in dialogue with ourselves, to come our, to know ourselves better, and then engage our neighbor with more clarity. But it is through our interactions with one another, talking about what we believe, sharing a meal together, contributing to causes that we care about, even across our differences, that we begin to build communities of care. And it is through our communities and networks of care that God's image is revealed and made known to us in very real ways. Together in community is a commitment to love, even when things are messy. So let us be drawn together in community for the sake of love. Because when we are together for love, we reveal collectively a clearer image of God's world. Amen. And let's sing. For the fruit of all creation. Voices United, number 227. <laughs> so much. Please be seated and friends, let's pray. God, we give you praise for all of the wonderful things in our lives, good friends, good food, and good community, and for the beauty of your creation that inspires us to create beautiful and thought-provoking works. We give you also gratitude for the hard things, the things that challenge us and change us. Help us to see your wonderful things here, too. We thank you for all the gifts that you have given us to make the world an engaging place to live. We know that amidst the joy in life, there are still places of sorrow. We pray for those suffering from mental or physical illnesses, and may we know your healing. And we pray for caregivers, May we feel supported by your presence. We pray today for your earth. May we find new sustainable ways to care for the earth and for all creation. 
We pray for people impacted by natural and human-made disasters. May they know your comfort. We pray for those suffering from political violence and unrest. May they know your peace. God, we pray for your people wherever they are gathered. Help us to learn from each other so that we may come to know you more deeply and be guided by your love. And so, friends, now let us hold a moment of silence together as we take time to reflect and pray the, own, the prayers that lay on our own hearts and minds in this moment. And join with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. For God is to all of us like our mother and our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Creator, we offer our gifts to you. May they serve your people as we come together in a community built upon your love. Let us reflect God's glory in our generosity to others. May we join freely of our resources so that this place may be always known as a beacon of hope. And may we build together a living example of God's great news because we are indeed recipients of God's grace and generosity. And so I, at this time, I would like to invite Karen to come forward. And if Murray, who is online, could open his camera and microphone uh, and come forward, the uh, Vera's Place Committee has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Um, we um, have we just wanted to keep, update you on what's been going on with Vera's Place. Um, so as most of you know, the last five years we've been in partnership with House of Friendship and Thresholds to provide tenants to, to the house and uh, those were women who were recovering from various addictions. Um, we were told in November, Murray, that um, they were um, backing out of their, of par their partnership with us. So we have been in discussion now for several months with um, the community to see what else was needed. Um, and after much discussion, we've been entered a new partnership with Reception House. Um, so Reception House receives new Canadian families um, and, and support them while they're getting their feet underneath them to continue to live in this country. So we asked them to provide us with tenants who were either single women or female-led families um, to keep the mandate of having the house available for women. So I'm happy to announce that as of Tuesday, the Vera's Place is now full. So for the first time in quite a while, we have, um, on one side we have a mom who has three children, and I'm guessing the children's age is to be about, there's a girl about 13, a little boy about seven, and a little girl that's about five and uh, she has one on the way. Um, then on the other side of the house is her mother and two adult children. So you'll see children running around and playing. They're quite excited to be here and, and um, they're full of fun. So we will be asking the congregation for um, a few things over the next little while to make sure that they have everything they need because the house wasn't really designed for kids. Um, one of the things that they've been asking for are bicycles. So um, we have acquired two bikes for the smaller children, but um, the other kids would like bicycles as well. So if you have access to a bicycle that you'd like to donate, and of course, soon we're going to have a new baby. 
over there. So the baby baby things would be required. So Murray, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, um, I just want to give a shout out to um, the Vera's Place Committee, namely uh, Derek Babcock, Neil Muxulus, and Karen Dixon for getting this all together um, and getting the house ready. So people that helped me specifically, uh, Dave McGinnis, Dave Petro several times, um, Steve Dixon, who's Mr. Fix-It, and, uh, <laughs> and, and Karen. And I we have to kind of shine a light on Karen. She does so much about getting that house ready. It, it goes kind of unnoticed unless I sing her praises and I don't do that enough. So I just want to say thank you because it's it was a bit of a transition from thresholds use to now kind of a more of a kid friendly use. And it took a lot of work and a lot of it came together just kind of a short time before Tuesday for the specifically the second family. So it, it, it all worked out. So I, I just want to say thank you. I'm so happy that it's full and the congregation should be happy that it's full too. If you see new families in and around the church, wave to them. Oh, another shout out to James from Reception House who has been the interpreter, a kind of a go between because their first language is Swahili, I think. Um, so it's, it, they're pretty good, but it takes a bit of for communication. So shout out to him. And I think that's about it. But I think we're, we're on our way and it's a, it's a great start, I think. And hopefully it continues. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, please just let me echo everything Murray uh, said about the Beerus Place Committee who have worked diligently uh, on this project from its inception. Um, such, such a great ministry. And I'm really excited to see some new families with the kids around. I'm really excited about that. Um, just while I'm thinking about it, Leslie, you said you had an announcement about some stuff for Waterloo yeah. Wayside. So uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do that at this moment. Yeah. Um, is this mic okay? Yep, go for it. Good morning, Emmanuel. Um, just a quick uh, little announcement as well. Um, our church is such a giving community. And um, at this time, I know the pandemic's been hard on everybody, but um, more so on our marginalized people. And so at this time, we're kind of asking if anybody uh, feels the need to uh, donate to the church. We need some, um, especially men's and ladies deodorants, um, small shampoos, small conditioners, um, toothbrushes, and toothpaste. Often, uh, Dollarama has very good deals for 88 cents, so sometimes shoppers. So, you know, if anybody, if everybody just even donated three or four items, 20 or so people, that's 60, 70 items. And uh, yeah, and I, oh, razors, uh, Miss Dixon, thank you. And razors are required too. So I know we're working on something now, usually the library will do something for us, but, and hotels, but you know, the hotels haven't been up and running lately, the pandemic, nobody's been going. So usually we have those small, I mean, you know, I, I lived on the streets for six years and I didn't want to carry around a giant bottle of shampoo. So anything smaller is much appreciated, as I said. So thank you very much. And I know the office is usually open Monday to Friday from nine to 12 and then one to four for donations or bring it Sunday morning or whatever you can do, much appreciated. Thanks guys. Thanks Les. And yeah, thanks to everyone for the ways that you continue to support all of our uh, various ministries here at the church. And uh, I would like to invite Jennifer and Trudy who will uh, sing for us our offertory. And as they are singing our offertory, all the ways that you can continue to support the Emmanuel and Waterloo Wayside and Vera's Place uh, communities will be on your screens.
for all of the ways we are givers and receivers, we give thanks. May the love that lives in the giving of ourselves be known to all who encounter this place. And may these offerings become a beacon of hope for all. Amen. Let us sing together one last time in our closing hymn, Voices United, number 402, We Are One. together in community. Be blessed by the Spirit of God to be God's church in this time and in this place because God loves you, God keeps you, God's face is forever shining upon you. And it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Amen. to everyone for gathering together in community today. Um, please have a